very rapidly in the last couple of decades. And so have the business education. Not just around the globe, but also in Pakistan. In order to keep pace with the changing world requirements, we can see our business schools evolving at a rapid pace also. If we see a long list of new initiatives being taken, new programs being faced, new curriculum developed, we can say that the effort of the Pakistan business schools has been at par with the rest. And it is not just in terms of the content, but also in terms of the delivery mechanisms through which this business education has been imparted in the various business schools of diverse background. So focus on quality under the circumstances is both understandable and inevitable also. We, in our seventh chapter of Deans and Director Conference, have come a long way. In the previous conferences, we have established this forum as one of the main platform through which we have made considerable progress. We have not just discussed and deliberated upon the problem, the issues, but we have also come up with concrete solutions through which the quality of business education has
uh, representation from all regions of the country in the glowing faces early morning. I'm also thankful to our founder chairman, Dr. Mukhtar Ahmed Saab, for sparing his time and his busy schedule to be here and to enter. And I must also remember the contributions of our late chairman, Dr. Hassan Murad Saab. May Allah rest his soul in peace. We are taking his vision further and further under the able leadership of current chairman and vice chairman and all the support from the business schools of the country. I now take the opportunity to thank all our sponsors. Every year the interest is increasing. So please join me to give a huge round of applause to our sponsors. And we hope that this support will continue. Let me assure you that the, your contributions are all, always spent wisely and for a good cause. It's a national cause that you're contributing to enhance the quality of business education in the country. Thank you very much and we hope you'll enjoy the next couple of days here. Multiple terms in the Senate of Pakistan. He holds a master's and a doctorate degree in economics from Boston University. His well-known works include a book on Argentinian privatization. After his higher education, he joined the faculty of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he led a research project for his doctoral students. Guest Dr. Abdul Hafiz Sheikh to address this August gathering. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dr. Farooq Iqbal Sahab, Nokhez Sahab, distinguished guests, uh, deans, professors, colleagues, assalamu alaikum. I'm delighted to be here. It's a very important um, seminar. And uh, I think uh, it's meeting at the right time. This is a critical time in many respects. And the economy is just coming out of a crisis. Uh, there is a platform of stabilization. And I think we have to understand how business education, uh, its quality enhancement, and the graduates coming out of our business schools can contribute towards taking this country forward. Secondly, the global economy is soft and we have to try harder, whether to promote exports, whether to create new markets, or whether to build new alliances. Third, I feel that business education has lost its prestige in some ways. And we have to find a way to make business graduates and business education more relevant to the changing times. Fourth, I believe there is a sort of a culture of education or business education in which the focus has been on mass production of degrees, whether it be BAs, MBAs, MCOMs, while at the same time quality may not have increased and relevance may not have been the dominant consideration. So we need also to think how to correct that imbalance. There are two historical failures of this country which we also should keep into mind. The first is, since its birth, Pakistan has not done a very good job of creating its exports. It has not done a very good job of trying to attract foreign investment. And we have to see whether our business education is a factor as to why we are unable to penetrate international markets and why our business groups and private sector uh, houses have not really been very effective. And maybe there is a need to incorporate that as we look towards the future. Another point is that this is supposedly a digital age. Global connectivity has been high. People talk of buzzwords like artificial intelligence and all that. Pakistan cannot miss this opportunity as we may have missed many other opportunities in the past. 
So we really also should use this time to see how we can actually galvanize or mobilize ourselves that this important revolution doesn't pass us by. We also have to think that how can we anticipate future jobs? According to the World Economic Forum, 65% of kids now going to school will end up doing jobs that don't exist now. So what sort of jobs will these be? How can we anticipate them? How can we tailor our business education to fulfill these requirements of the future? We also have to see that why 40% of our women graduates do not get into the jobs mainstream. If we are to improve our national productivity, which is a prerequisite for attaining our full potential, then this has to be remedied. And so we have to think in terms when we talk of inclusivity, of gender inclusivity as a dominant consideration. And finally, I've, the context I want to highlight is that as uh, Dr. Farooq Iqbal said, only 22 universities are accredited in his scheme. So that is a pretty uh, pathetic number because we are 220 million people and that means one accredited business school per 10 million people of this country. So we also have to figure out how are we going to raise this number manifold without, of course, compromising on the quality. Now, let's start by asking a few questions. Okay. The first is on inclusivity. What does it mean when we talk about inclusivity here? I think it should include all those uh, stakeholders, all those segments which have the potential to participate but are somehow being denied the opportunity to participate. This could include our people from the rural areas, it could include people from our non-English medium systems of education, it could mean people who are smart but are underprepared. It could mean people who are intelligent but have less money. It could mean people who are ready to play their part but a barrier is coming in the way. So we have to think about how to actually go about including them in this national mainstream. How might that happen? Well, we can think in terms of need-based scholarships. We can think in terms of feeder schools and colleges. We can think in terms of preparatory programs. We can think in terms of remedial courses in English and mathematics and the statistics. We can think in terms of incentives to the private sector. We can think in terms of internships for this purpose. And we can think in terms of hybrid methods of teaching involving technologies to reach larger groups of people. And of course, I'm sure you will. What should the government do? Well. The government is trying, with its limited resources, to do like the National Incub Incubation Program, which five of these you know, units have been set up in collaboration with the private sector, Lungs and Jazz and Fatima and so on. And 200 startups have been done. We are also initiating a Kamyab Jawan program, which is a way to bring scholarships and entrepreneurial talent up by giving them interest at subsidized rates. We are also, this is a hundred billion rupees program. And of course the HEC is being financed to do a variety of programs. But one can do much more and I'm happy to discuss those. In terms of the education itself, we have to say, how can we make it relevant? So one of the things that is a uh, problem in this country is low government efficiency. So if you can somehow tailor or uh, 
include considerations of how to prepare graduates in business school who can improve the efficiency of the government, whether it's the finance ministry, the planning ministry, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, and of course, a lot of the state-owned enterprises. We also have to think in terms of going back to the fundamental question. No country in the world has really risen. No country in the world has brought prosperity to its people on its own. So we have to find a way to remedy this by improving the quality of our private sector to generate exports. And this government is committed to that policy. We are giving subsidy to the exporters on gas, on electricity, on loans, and we have zero taxes on exports. So after a five-year period of stagnation, we are seeing some growth. But in order for that to be sustained, the whole ecosystem of the private sector has to be geared towards promotion of exports for building up relationships. And I think the business schools and the business uh, school leaders have to think about how to incorporate that. If there is a CPEC, what sort of a thinking is there in the business school in terms of promoting exports to China? Are there any kind of relationships that you have with East Asian think tanks or, or European think tanks or schools to understand their markets, to understand the barriers to our exports, whether they are cultural, whether they are related to tariffs, whether there are non-tariff barriers, whether there are ways of doing business that somehow our graduates are not getting in their universities. So we have to think about that and in order to make it relevant and also to try and build relationships with the universities and other business houses in those countries. We also have, in terms of inclusivity and uh, to think of the private sector, whether it is in terms of philanthropy, whether it is in terms of scholarships, whether it is in terms of internships, or whether it's in terms of sharing of thoughts and best practices. Now, this whole business of technology, apparently there is this great technological revolution taking place, which is reducing the costs of doing business, which is making connectivity easier, which is allowing us to forge relationships, but they all require one fundamental big fact, that we have to be prepared. If we are sitting beside a river, but never actually benefit from it, then we cannot, unless we are prepared to swim. So I think the business schools have to prepare our people to swim, to compete, and to forge relationships which are mutually beneficial. What can the government offer? As I said, we are trying to come out of an economically difficult situation. We have to be very aggressive in managing our expenditures. But this is an area where you can count on the government. I'm happy to invite leaders from the business community, from the government, from the state-owned enterprises, and your representatives to forge a way forward. I'm willing to commit both financial resources, leadership, as well as time to make this happen. So if uh, this group in its recommendations comes out and tries to uh, challenge us, I think you will find us not wanting in this area. Uh, finally, let me say that, you know, in my life I've had the opportunity to attend many conferences like this. And usually they start in this way, a big hall, a lot of important people, good speeches, sometimes not so good speeches, and of course tea afterwards. I want you to really, I want to challenge you to say that, look, the topic you have chosen is very, very important. 
the people you have assembled are the right ones. And the questions you are posing are the correct ones. The point is, what do we want to take out of this conference? How is the success of this meeting to be decided? At the outset, you should ask that question. If we have assembled and are asking the right questions on a very timely and important topic, how are we going to say that we were successful in this meeting? And allow me a, a, a very humbly to make some suggestions. The first is please do not have too many speeches. Instead, let people have interaction. Let people talk to each other. Don't bore them to death with a lot of speeches while others are falling asleep. Please interact. Second, try to develop practical suggestions. If somebody has you know, worked very hard in a computer and has 20 very important suggestions which all sound very, I don't know, uh, knowledgeable and it's not going to work until and unless the suggestions are practical, they are relevant, they are meant for our own use. And the third is, you know, please make suggestions that can be actually measured. So my uh, proposal is that please be very interactive, Please come out with suggestions that are practical. Please come out with goals that can be measured. And please commit resources and assignments to the relevant people. Because if everybody comes here, listens to good speeches, and then splits, we can be here again next year and not really know what transpired. So take a few important things. We cannot achieve everything. Let's take a few important things. Can this number go from 22 to 30? And how can that be done? What role can the business schools play in promoting exports? What sort of adjustments we need to do? In terms of inclusivity, how can we measure whether we are being inclusive or not? What sort of people need to be brought into this mainstream? So you focus on quality, you focus on additionality or incrementality in inclusiveness, and you focus on one or two big national goals. And you try to be very practical, very simple. You know, one of the difficulties I had in this conference is I was having a hard time figuring out what it's all about. So please try and be simple so ordinary folks like government ministers and other stakeholders can also understand what's going on. Because, you know, I was like nervous coming here to all these big shot professors and deans and they're not knowing exactly what it's all about. It was Dr. Iqbal who said, you know, please don't be nervous, Afiz, it's going to be okay. Just come and, you know, he kind of help me figure out what it's all about. So with all that, uh, good luck. Uh, thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to interact. Thank you. Mr. Anas Abdul Hadi. Shaheed Zulfikar. Institute of Business Ad Institute of Business Management, Karachi, Platinum Sponsor.
Park Ames, the Institute of Management Sciences, Lahore, Platinum Sponsor, Dr. Khalid. Karachi School of Business and Leadership Platinum Sponsor, Dr. Zishan Ahmed. The Institute of Chartered Accountant Accountants of Pakistan Platinum Sponsor, Mr. Jafar Hussain. Nast Islamabad, now we move on to our gold sponsors, Sakhar IBA, University of Management and Technology Lahore, gold sponsors, Dr. Muhammad Aslam.